Good morning team, we are still morning. Um, so this is welcome from the Museum of Cornish Life, welcome back. We're doing another collections chat and today you're with me. My name's Imogen and I am the museum assistant here. So we're going to have a look today at one of my absolute favourite bays, uh, well collection displays. Um, it's called the Radio Bay and you can see why. So turn around and you can have a little look. Oh, hang on a minute. Gosh, how terribly exciting. We've got all sorts of angles going on here. So, Radio Bay. We've got radios, we've got gramophones, record players, and we've even got two televisions, five points, if you can, uh, if you can spot which ones they are. A little bit different from what we're used to, perhaps, but um, at the moment, what with coronavirus and everything, uh, we all have to stay at home, which I'm sure you all know. Um, so, what I thought you, I would do is give you a historical comparison uh, for what you might be doing now to pass the time. So I don't know if you are listening to the radio or watching TV, maybe using music streaming services or something like Netflix, um, but perhaps a historical comparison uh, might interest you. So, visiting the museum from home, we're going to start with jumping back in time to the 1870s with a uh, phonograph. Now, over, what you can see is over here, so it's that uh, brown looking trumpet thing. Um, which is in fact where the sound comes out of. So what we've got here is the phonograph and it was invented by uh, Thomas Edison, as I said, in the 1870s. It's a mechanical way of playing and recording sound. So what you would do is, I don't know if you can see down here, wave my hand, there, um, is where you would put a cylinder or disc and it would have grooves cut into it, um, which would then the needle would trace and this would cause vibrations causing sound waves so you'd be able to hear um, the music coming out. So what you would have had in the 1970s right the way through to sort of the uh, 1970s, the 1870s, right the way through to sort of 1890 uh, or so is you would have had maybe a brass band or a recording of a piano or a parlour song perhaps. Um, a little bit different to today's uh, best top 40 uh, but you know we uh, historical and all that. Um, I won't give you a rendition of a parlour song, I'll spare you that. Um, but what we're going to do next is so the phonograph developed into the gramophone and the record player. So we're going to sing and dance our way through, not literally, um, as I said I'll spare you that, um, into the 20th century but we'll take a quick detour via the uh, uh, late 19th century to visit Marconi and his invention of the radio. So we're going to land in 1922, so as you can see we've got different kinds of radios here. Um, we're going to land in 1922 and this is when we had the first radio programme broadcast to listeners from home uh, from the BBC. Now Arthur Burroughs was the director of programmes at the BBC and he opened the transmission in 1922, the very first transmission at 6pm with this is Tulo Marconi House, London Calling. I think you'll find that's an excellent rendition of, uh, of him giving his, the first iconic statement. If you look it up on YouTube or on the BBC website, then you'll be able to hear the real thing. Um, great stuff. I mean, really is. So, if you were back in the 1920s or the 1930s, you would have listened to the radio on one of these. So, over here... We have a Rogers three band radio. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty sizable piece of equipment there. Um, and it's got, it's called a pedestal base, large mesh speaker grill, five knobs and a tuning dial. So as you can see, rather fetching little green band indicator. It would definitely take up more of your, more of your sitting room rather than uh, your kitchen side, which we probably have at the moment. Um, and yes, you would have, sat, you would have listened um, to the radio through something like this. So in the 1920s and 1930s, we have the development of what's called Art Deco style. So Art Deco um, is the kind of more sophisticated and glamorous, uh, love it or, uh, or hate it, um, new kind of style that was really trying to be modern. It was trying to make a bit of a difference to what we'd seen before. Um, and you get these kind of geometric, angular shapes, um, you get sort of chrome, shiny, shiny surfaces. And it was made using um, these kind of new materials, um, which is like Bakelite and early forms of plastic. So we've got one down here. 
the Ferranti Nova all-wave radio, um, which was powered um, by electricity, and it's made out of... So it looks like it has a wood finish, but it's actually made of plastic. So Bakelite, as I said, early form of plastic. But as you can see, it's got these kind of angular, angular shapes um, designed to give it a really clean cut, modern look, completely different to what we'd seen in sort of Victorian times up through to the uh, uh, early 20th century. So we also have with um, Art Decor, we've got this kind of real move away from different styles of living. So this is our information panel. Um, which talks about some of the lifestyle changes. So when you guys come down to the museum, when we're open again, have a good old read, and um, it tells you a little bit more about sort of the different kinds of buildings that you would perhaps see, and the kind of differences in um, sort of commercial behaviour that we also saw after the war. So this, the 1920s, you know, we remember that for this kind of hedonistic lifestyle. You know, think about the Great Gatsby. Um, you know, it was about needing to enjoy life to the full, and just changing the way that we were doing things. So you get sort of coffee sets and radios as well as buildings being developed, um, which really were trying to live life for the moment and be sort of glamorous and add something really new and modern and fresh. Um, moving out to the suburbs um, was something that was happening and people in sort of new housing that was, that was being built after the war, um, there was this kind of idea that you would equip your house with the latest looks and there were things like um, higher purchase that happened, which meant that you could be able to, you were able to afford to buy things like this. So ordinary families were able to kind of get their hands on bits and pieces. Obviously, we still had quite a lot of um, a lot of poverty um, at this time, but these sort of middle classes were able to sort of get their hands on this kind of stuff. What I want to show you quickly as well is this rather large effort going on here. Um, so this is actually a radiogram, and it's made by the Gramophone Company Limited, and it's called a console or audio radiogram, and it can accommodate up to eight records at a time. Now you may be saying, Imogen, why are you showing me a cupboard? But <laughs> what's actually is inside here. So if I excuse my uh, thumb to my thumb without the glove, um, I'm using it to turn around the camera. So what we've got in here is the radio side of it. And I particularly like this object because if you look really closely, it would help if I didn't shake the camera, apologies to you if you're getting seasick, um, is that it tells you where you need, what you need to tune, where you need to tune into, um, as which wavelength you need in order to pick up the different things. So let's see what we can spot. Okay, so up here we've got uh, Moscow and then there's the Vatican in Rome. So just up here on the top. Again, wave my thumb, thumbs up team. Um, I'm wearing my glove like this because obviously we need to protect our objects so we don't have to touch them with our hands. Um, when you touch anything, um, you leave, um, there's, there's, there's moisture and there's oils and things on your, on your fingers. And not to mention, um, we're trying to not touch things at the moment because of coronavirus, but um, what happens is you can leave, leave sort of residue behind on your objects and it's not good for them. So we tend to use gloves, which is why I've got my kind of funny funny thing going on here. Um, unfortunately it doesn't register on the iPad so that's why I have to have my thumb clear. But back to the object, we've got our, as I said, so you can spot Moscow and the Vatican so you can tune in to listen to the Pope. Um, what else have we got down here? There's Oslo, there's the USA, Lisbon, all sorts of things. So you can tune in to anybody who is broadcasting um, whichever frequency you would need. So I think that's rather beautiful and you can see it, see the lovely um, the sort of tuning knobs you've got going down here. So you've got four of them. There's volume, uh, there's the to uh, tune, tuning, and the wave band. So you've got um, low wave, medium wave. And then if we scooch over to this side, what is in this bitch image, you ask? Well, I can show you. So this is the record side. So what you could have is you could have up to eight records in this one and it would play. So you can see the, the turning deck there and you can see the plastic arm coming down um, for the needle which would then read your record and over here you can see the different speeds that you could set it to to play. Well that's your, that's your on-off. Those are your different speeds so depending on the size of the record um, and the gap sort of um, between the grooves it would depend on how quickly you set it to play. But isn't that fabulous? I mean again, it takes up a, a fair amount of room 
not exactly a tabletop effort, but there you go. So that's your kind of 19, 1930s. Um, and then we're going to move on to leaving our radios for a second and have a peek at this lovely gramophone. I don't know if you can see it in the back there. I'm pointing at it with my double finger. Um, this is from 1927, and this is probably one of my favourite objects in the museum. I have many, but this is one of them. I think it's such a lovely, lovely colour. Um, it's in a blue travel case, as you can see, and underneath the, uh, the turning deck is actually made of blue velvet, which I think is wonderful. Um, you can see in here the, um, the turnstile and the needle, and all the bits and pieces that you would need to... Uh, to sort of get going. What I particularly love about this though is the little handwritten note in the back of in the back of the uh, the case itself and it says this gramophone was bought from Moons of Truro in 1927 by Mr Gilbert of Helston and it cost him seven pounds and ten shillings. Isn't that wonderful? Oh we're running out of oh my my uh, quality is not very good I apologize. There we go back in business we can see my notes here all squished. Um, but what I particularly like about this though is, I don't know if you can see under there, the, his master's voice is the brand. And I particularly like their logo because as you can see it's a little dog while listening to the gramophone poking his nose into it. And this is a shout out for all you crazy kids um, at home who are uh, listening or watching. And maybe you've got a pet or two around as well. So that's again shout out to those dogs and cats and birds and fishes or whatever you've got going on. Um, the museum is dog friendly, so when we are open again to visitors, do come in and see us. And I know you can show your furry friend his equivalent, his or her equivalent, in there. We've got some records um, on the top. See if I can lift some out carefully. So this is records of the century, and we've got Winifred Atwell, Beverly Sisters, Jimmy Boy, Jean Carson, Rose McLeary, and Doris Day. How about that? So. If you want to get a real flavour of what you would have been listening to in 1927 on something like this. Um, oh, again, my connection's not brilliant. Sorry, team. Let's wait for it to catch up. There we go. Um, have a listen on the internet, on YouTube or something, to some of these old songs from different centuries. Just to gain a flavour of what it would have sounded like. Um, because the way we understand history, you know, we try, let's try and use all our five senses to really think about that, you know. Cooking smelt differently, tasted differently. We didn't have things like, you know, sugar and salt for a very long. Well, we had salt for a long time, but we didn't have things like sugar for a very long time. Um, but our sounds of it, as we started to engage with the world differently, things like the gramophone, things like the radio, enabled us to to hear, bring music and things into our own home in a way that we hadn't done before. So before you could have, as with the Victorians, you could get. A, a brass band in, you could get um, a sort of string quartet maybe to come and play if you were wealthy enough to do so. Um, but then you could also play your own piano or play your own musical instruments. But the quality and this kind of mass enjoyment of music um, really came about um, in the sort of sharing this experience with everybody, everybody listening to the same record or listening to the same radio programme, um, really changed when you get these kind of commercial items like the radio, like the gramophone, which people were able to afford. This again is something different. Um, as we get into the 1950s, so I'm going to take you over and have a look at the Sky Queen radio, which I think is brilliant because I just love the name. So this is the Sky Queen radio, isn't she fabulous? Down here you can see the logo, Sky Queen, sorry the light's not very good, with a carry case and uh, she's a rather fancy uh, cream and red colour, which I think is lovely. And you can see the volume and tuning um, and knobs on the top. As you can see, you know, we're starting to get a lot more compact. We're getting a lot more, you know, we're getting a lot smaller. We've gone from these huge, great things to something that's much more, um, much more portable. I mean, it's still not quite our plug-in Walkmans and whatever that we used to have. And, um, you know, our phones and, um, you know, MP3 players and all that kind of caper. Um, that we have, you know, had over the past couple of decades, but nevertheless, we're still, we're getting smaller, we're getting more and more portable. Um, in 1952, you had the very first UK music chart. So you're thinking about your UK top 40 that you might have now. Um, in 1952, we got the first version. So have a, have a look on the internet, have some, do some Googling, and uh, see if you can find out 
um, see if you can listen to some of those songs and try and um, kids if you've got want something to do um, write down three things that you like about it three things maybe that you don't and try and listen for those different kinds of um, kinds of music kinds of lyrics kinds of songs um, to what we have today and yeah three good things and three bad things perhaps balance is very important so in the 1960s we have the rise of pirate radio and these were playing pop music and that rock and roll so these radio stations were offshore and they offered a kind of alternative shall we say like a fun alternative maybe to your straight laced um bbc who were you know, terribly proper and that kind of thing oh my god but um so pirate radio i don't know if some of you have seen uh, maybe the film the boat that rocked but that's always a good one um but it really is this kind of new youth culture that was you know the swinging 60s rock and roll this real move and departure from previous values. You know, times change, society changes, and music is one of those ways that you can trace it. So we've had our Victorian parlour music, we've had our, you know, 1920s, 1930s, this is the BBC, and then we've got our, you know, rock and roll coming through into the 1960s, which is really pretty cool, I think. So, um, by the 1960s as well, we also have... Households in Britain, a lot of households, actually owning television sets. Now, I asked you earlier if you could spot um, spot the TVs, um, and you'd be forgiven if you didn't because they look like this. And I'm not sure what you're watching on at the moment, but uh, yeah, your television, if it's behind you, it probably looks a hell of a lot different. Um, so what we have down here, which I love, when I ask kids when they come in what this is, they look at me a bit blankly. And you can kind of see why, but it's actually a Perdio, Portorama model of a portable television. And it is a whopping 8.5 inch screen in black and white. So again, not quite your HD stuff that we're used to. Colour TV, in fact, arrived in 1969. But when you're first off, that's quite a thing. Imagine watching your cartoons on that. Um, again, yeah, uh, a di very different experience to what we're used to now. Nevertheless, this is how, this is where we where we kind of developed from. I'm going to, I'm going to finish, because I've probably kept you going enough. Um, I'm going to finish with uh, one of our favorite objects. And this is an Echo uh, T545. It's a black and white television. And as, as you can see, it's um, popped on a wooden box. Um, and this was made by the donor himself. And what they used to do is they took, the donor's family took um, this on their camping trips, their family camping trips. Um, it was brought in the late 1960s, and when they went camping um, into places like Newquay, um, they used to take it with them. And it had a cable that you they would use to plug into the car or the motorbike so they could run it. Um, but they primarily bought it to keep the kids entertained. So screen time, guys, has always been an important part of the family holiday. Everything in balance and everything in moderation. Um, but isn't that wonderful? We all know that Cornwall's weather can be changeable. Um, so on a, perhaps a rainy afternoon, they could sit snugged up, snuggle up inside, um, inside their tent and they could have a little watch of this, listen to some music, see what's on TV. But isn't that wonderful? Also very resourceful to have made that um, rather fetching little carry case there, keep it all protected. So this is our wonderful, wonderful radio bay. I'm glad that you've uh, joined me to have a look at these. Um, when you come to the museum, there's so much, much more to see, um, and you could, you know, pop in and have a closer look. I haven't gone into Magic Lanterns today, but there are some, if you look on our Facebook page and on our website, there are some um, videos of uh, our animation festival, which talks a bit about Magic Lanterns. But anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me. I've had a lovely time showing you all around. Stay safe, keep washing those hands, and um, the museum will be doing a lot more sort of videos of museums so you can enjoy the museum from home. So tune in, it's been wonderful having you. Um, best wishes from us at the museum and we will see you all again.